Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to draw some simple cartoon trees in Blender Grease Pencil, just mainly to provide an overview of a workflow using layers and materials and strokes and things like that. So this will be pretty simple, and I wanna just talk about some of the functions of Grease Pencil as we go. So you can see I have Blender 3.5.0 open, and I don't have any special add-ons enabled, so you should be seeing the same thing I'm seeing if you're using this version of Blender. So from this screen, I wanna click on 2D animation. So to create these trees, I'm going to go to my draw tool, which is over here, and I'll be using that. And then I wanna make some adjustments on the settings. So the primary settings to be concerned about are radius and strength. So you can see up here, radius is currently at 20, and that's what that looks like. And then if I click and drag in here, I can increase the size of that. You can also use your bracket keys to increase or decrease the size. You can also change the size if you click F on your keyboard and then drag, and you can see I'm increasing the size of that. Okay, so I'm gonna click in the radius, I'm gonna change this to 30, hit enter. Let me see what that looks like. Actually, I may go up to 50. Okay, that looks good. And up here, right next to the 50, you can see that blue area, that is the pin pressure. And we'll leave that on so that as I draw and press harder on the pin, it'll increase the size of the radius, so that gives it a little more variation. And the one next to it is strength, which is the same to me as opacity. So if I raise that to one, you see that's darker, but it's also controlled by pin pressure. So if I'm really light with my pin, you can see it's lighter, and then as I press harder, it gets darker. So I'm gonna bring the strength down to 0.8. See what that looks like. Actually, I'm gonna bring it back up to one. I like that, I think that gives a little bit of variation. And I'm actually gonna take the radius back down to 40. Okay, I'm gonna go to edit mode up here, and then I'm gonna left click and drag to select all that and hit delete. I'll go back to draw mode. So the tree will be made up of a couple layers. It'll be the strokes layer, the fill layer, and then a shadow layer. So to do that, I'm going to go to the right in my properties panel, and I'm gonna click on this grease pencil icon. You can see we have two layers already, lines and fills. So I'm gonna double click on the name lines and change that to strokes. I'll leave fills named that same. So over here on the right, I'm gonna click the plus icon to create a new layer. And that is between strokes and fills. I'm gonna double click on that and change that to shadow. So the next thing I wanna do is set up my colors. So if I go to the tab below the grease pencil tab, this is my materials tab. So I've got solid stroke, which is what I'm gonna use to create the strokes. So I'll leave that as is. I'm gonna click on squares stroke. And we can change all these, so I don't need to create a new one. I can just modify what we have. So I'm gonna double click on that and change that to fill. And we'll double click on solid stroke and change that to just stroke. And then for fill, I'm going to uncheck stroke. So we're disabling the stroke. This will just be a solid color. So I'm gonna click fill for that. Then we'll click on the base color black and I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit and then change this to a green. One good thing about grease pencils is when I draw with this material, I can go back and change it and it'll affect the drawing. So I'm not committing to this. Um, I can change this at any time. So that's very helpful. So we don't have to be exact on our color. Once I get it in, we can play with it a little bit to change it if we need to. And then for the shadow, I'm gonna make that black and I currently have fill selected so that's exactly what I need. I'm going to click in the base color and I'm going to change that to black and then I'll modify the blend mode for that. So I'll click on dot strokes and just hit this minus tab to delete that because I don't need it and those are my colors for now. So I'm using the draw tool on the pencil option and the lines don't have to be perfect because we're going to give it a cartoon look so it's kind of this sketchy look is going to work well with the style I'm going for. I've drawn this, you know, much bigger than the canvas, but that's okay. I'll show you how to resize it in a second. Okay, I think that looks okay. So I'm gonna go to object mode, and I'm gonna hit S to scale this. I'm gonna G to grab it and bring it over here. I'm gonna hit R to rotate it just a little bit. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to go back to draw mode. So there's our cartoon tree. So the next thing I want to do is fill this in. Now, if you wanted to have drawn this and had it a flat color, you could have used one single stroke with the fill and the stroke both selected with different colors. So then you could have drawn it and colored it at the same time. So I'll show you real quick how that would look. So I've created a new stroke. I'm going to click new to create a new material. I've got stroke selected. I'm going to select fill and click in here and change that color to a green. So now if I was doing this, you can see how that looks. So you could have done that. So let me undo that. So you could have done that with the strokes, but I want three different layers because I want the shadow layer to be between those two. You could have put the shadow layer on top of the single stroke layer, but I wanted the stroke to be on top of the shadow and then the fill to be behind it. So to me, it's just easier to create the separate layers. So I'm gonna click delete next to that material. So now that I've got that size the way I want, I'm gonna click on this lock icon to lock the layer so I can't adjust it. Then I'm gonna click on the fill layer. Then I'm gonna go to the materials tab and make sure I have fill selected. And I'm gonna fill this in real quick. Let me scroll out and see what that looks like. Okay, I think that looks good. So one thing we can do, you can see this area here is outside of that. I could go into edit mode and adjust that if I wanted to by dragging the points. So I can select that point, grab it, bring it up, and I can do that for multiple points. But instead I wanna to go to sculpt mode. I'm gonna select the grab brush. Using F, I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. And then I want to drag these points up. So you see how quickly I was able to adjust that? If I need to do that here, I can do that. And then up here, if I want to bring it down a little bit, I can grab that and bring it in. Same here. So as you go, you can make some tweaks to this pretty easy and pretty quickly with sculpt tools. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to draw mode. That's our tree. So before doing the shadows, I'm going to click on the plus icon to add another layer. Then I'll click on new. Then I'm gonna type in trunk fill. And I'm going to go to surface and I'm going to change that from stroke to fill and change that to a brown. And again, if I don't like these colors later, I can adjust those and they'll show up in the drawing. And I'm just going to put the trunk color on the same layer as the fill for the tree. So make sure I've got that. I've got that layer selected. Let me scroll in. Okay, I think those are a little too dark, so I'm gonna click on the materials tab and I still got trunk fill selected. I'm gonna click on the base color and bring that up a little bit. And you can see that changing in the viewport. So this is really a great way to work if you just wanna put some colors down and then adjust them later. So I'm gonna choose the fill stroke again just to add a little bit of color to the bottom. I'll just use the same color as the tree. Just draw this in. Okay, I think that gives a little dimension to it. So before I add the shadows, I want to click on the materials. I've got the tree material selected. I want to click on the base color and I'm going to make that a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to go back to the grease pencil properties, click on the shadow layer. I'm going to lock the fill layer. Okay, to draw in the shadows, I'm going to click on the solid fill and then make sure I'm on the shadow layer. So I'm going to draw this in roughly and then I can adjust it with the sculpt tool later if I need to. And then I'm going to mask it by using the mask function so we don't have to worry about being inside the lines on this. So I'm gonna bring this in. So 
So I'm not sure exactly what this will look like until I get the masking enabled. So with the shadow layer selected, I'm gonna click on this mask button here to enable it. Then I'll hit the plus sign to choose what layers it will be masked by and we'll choose fill. So you can see what that looks like. So I'm gonna go up here to blend and choose multiply. And then I wanna change the opacity down a bit. So masking requires you to think a little bit ahead about if I want this layer to be masked, what's gonna mask it. So I already knew that my solid fill layer would allow me to cut off anything on the outside of the tree. So it worked well as a masking layer for this one. Shadow selected, I'm gonna actually draw in a little bit of a mask here, just to give this a little color. See what that looks like. I've got that grease pencil stroke selected. I'm gonna to go to object mode and I'll hit shift D with that item selected and I'll drag that over. Then we'll come out of 2D animation mode. So you can see those objects are lined up perfectly with each other. So I'm gonna hit G to grab the duplicate and I'm gonna hit Y to constrain it to the Y axis and bring that back. Okay, you can see now that they're not quite aligned. I'm gonna hit zero on my numpad to go back to my 2D animation view. I'm gonna hit S to scale it down. And G to grab it and bring it over. Just create a little variation. I'm gonna hit S to scale it and then I'll hit X to constrain it to the X axis. So I thinned it up a little bit. I'm gonna hit G again to grab it and bring it down. And I'm gonna hit R to rotate it. I'm gonna change that just a little bit. G to grab it and bring it down. So the last thing I wanna show you is how to recolor the second tree without having to recolor it by hand. So to do that, I wanna click the plus symbol to create a new material. I'm gonna click new. I'm gonna click in this text box and change it to fill tree two. I wanna uncheck stroke because I just wanna color and I wanna click the fill tool. I wanna to click on the fill color. I wanna choose this eyedropper tool. I'm gonna to choose that color. Now you see I've got that color. I'm gonna click in it again. I'm gonna darken that just a little bit and maybe make it a little more brown. So up here in the scene, I'm gonna double click on stroke and change it to tree one. Now I'll click on the duplicated stroke and change it to tree two. And with tree two selected, I'm gonna go up here and go to edit mode. And then I'm gonna click on the grease pencil properties and I've got shadow selected. I'm gonna actually select fill and we'll lock the other two. Then we'll left click and drag and I've selected that fill. Then we'll go to the materials tab and I've got fill two selected, I'll hit assign. And then I wanna go to draw mode again and now you can see I've changed the color of the tree. Now it did change the color of the trunk as well but I can recolor that pretty quickly. So with that layer selected, I'm gonna choose the trunk fill color and just draw that in real quick. I'm actually gonna to go to object mode one more time, hit S to scale it, bring it down a little bit, hit G to grab it. Okay, so there's our cartoon trees. Didn't take very long to create. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe and be on the lookout for future videos where I discuss this type of drawing process for animation backgrounds. Thanks again for watching.